Alrighty, in this video we are talking about personas. Why we use them, when we use them, the types of them. Let's do it. In the context of AI prompting, a persona is a fictional character or role assigned to the AI to influence its responses. By instructing the AI to adopt a specific persona, you can then shape its tone, the style, and perspective of its outputs. This technique is a powerful tool in our prompt engineering toolkit. This allows you for more nuanced and targeted interactions with the AI systems. So why personas? Personas serve several important functions in AI prompting. Let's go over them. Number one is going to be contextual framing. They provide a framework for the AI to understand and respond to queries. Number two is going to be their specialized knowledge. Personas can embody expertise in specific fields. Act as a doctor, act as a psychologist. Number three is going to be the tone and style control. They influence the language and the communication style of the AI's response. Number four is going to be creative exploration. Personas enable diverse perspectives and unconventional thinking. Number five on why use personas, it's going to be the task specific optimization. These are often able to be tailored to suit particular tasks or problem solving approaches. Let's talk about the types of personas. There is a million different versions and you know, there's no right way to really do this, but I can kind of broadly categorize them into several different types. So let's do that. Number one is going to be the professional persona. For example, you are an experienced data scientist. Number two, you could do character personas. For example, respond like you are Sherlock Holmes. Number three would be like a, an emotional persona. For example, you are an empathetic listener. Probably all need one of those in our life. Number four is going to be a conceptual persona. What do I mean by that? Maybe you could say, act as if you are the concept of time. Now that's a thought provoking conversation. And then number five, you could do something like a skill based persona. For example, maybe you are an expert in simplifying complex topics. All right, moving on. Let's talk about a few ways to actually create an effective persona. Number one, you always need to be specific. Clearly define your persona's characteristics, the background, and the expertise that he or she has. Number two would be provide your persona with some context. Give the persona maybe a backstory or a setting that informs its perspective. Number three, it's important to define its boundaries. Specify what the persona knows and doesn't know. Both important. Number four, Align with a purpose. Ensure that your persona serves an intended goal for a task. Let it know why it's there. Why does it matter? Number five is going to be consider who your actual audience is. You can tailor the persona to target your audience's needs and expectations. All right, now I'm going to go over a bunch of examples on how to, you know, set up your persona. This is just kind of to get your head turning. So let's do it. Number one, you could do something like a technical writing persona. For instance, this is what you would maybe say. You are a technical writer with 10 years of experience in explaining complex software concepts to beginners. Your writing style is clear, concise, and you use analogies to make difficult ideas accessible. Now that is a good persona. And now that's how it's going to think. It's going to keep doing that over and over. And that's the frame of reference it's coming from when you do anything else and ask any more questions. All right, for my, second example, for my second example, I use this one a lot. It's like a creative brainstorming persona. So this is kind of maybe a way I would set that up. I would say, assume the persona of Leonardo da Vinci. You are a polymath with expertise in the arts, science, and engineering. Approach problems with curiosity and inventiveness. Drawing connections between diverse fields of knowledge. That is a powerful tool and a man to talk to. Another example of a persona that could be very useful to you would be maybe like a customer service persona. Here's how I would set that up. I would say something like, you are a patient and empathetic customer service representative for a major tech company. Your goal is to understand the customer's issues thoroughly and provide clear step-by-step -step solutions while maintaining a friendly and supportive tone. All right, so those are some of the examples. There's a million ways to skin a cat. You are just going to have to hone them in over time and you will get a better understanding once you just start practicing. Just build some out, test it out, it's fun. All right, now let's talk about some of the best practices when dealing with personas. Number one is gonna be the consistency. Maintain the persona's characteristic through the entire interaction. If you're done with him, start a whole new chat. Number two is gonna be flexibility. Allow room for your persona to adapt to unexpected queries and situations. Don't make it so rigid. 
Number three is going to be ethical considerations. Ensure that your persona doesn't promote any harmful stereotypes or biases. Just had to put that one in there. Number four is going to be the clarity or purpose you're giving it. Always keep the end goal in mind when designing your persona. It's very important. It's going to help you. It's going to help him. Number five is going to be refinement. Please be prepared to adjust your persona based on the results and feedback you are getting. I mean, imagine you have an assistant that you just hired that's never done your job. Maybe the first day she can do a couple things, but by the end of the year, you've talked about it, you've taught it so many things, it knows what you're expecting. Now you have an amazing assistant. That's kind of how AI works. All right, last, I just wanna talk about a couple pitfalls I keep noticing when people are making their own personas. Number one is gonna be overcomplicating. Avoid creating overly complex personas that may confuse the AI or lead to inconsistent responses. Number two would be stereotyping. Be cautious not to rely on harmful stereotypes when defining your persona. Number three is gonna be lack of specificity. Vague personas may not effectively guide the AI's responses. There's a fine balance between being too complicated and being too vague. You're gonna to have to find it, trial and error. Number four is gonna be inconsistency. Switching personas mid-conversation can lead to a confusing, contradictory output. Just stick to one, like I said. If you need another one, build another chat. Use that persona over there, keep them separate. Number five is gonna be over-reliance. Remember that personas are just a tool. They are not a complete solution for the most part. The personas should be used with other prompting techniques to get your best results. With that being said, see you in the next video.